as if stripping women of their bodily autonomy and rights to make decisions about their own bodies wasn't harsh enough. Dennis Prager has put out an op-ed in a publication known as the Daily Signal to say, mm, women really need to control their emotions. And here's how I propose they do it. So he starts by talking about, listen, there are some differences between men and women. Okay, it's important for us to make sure we raise good boys so they don't turn into rapists and criminals. But we've been ignoring the women. Equally we've important. been ignoring the women, and it's equally important. I mean, they're not more predisposed to be criminals and rapists, but they've got those emotions, and we got to control that. Mm -hmm. So he writes, as I've been telling parents for many years now. They need to teach their daughters to control their natures just as much as they teach their sons to do so. Specifically, girls have to learn to control their emotions. Let's pause for a second. To be fair, right wing men are known for being very calm individuals. I mean, mm -hmm. Donald Trump, our latest Republican president. If there's one thing Trump is known for, yeah. it's keeping his head cool, never having any meltdowns. He's just an unemotional, straight to the facts kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Let me continue. He writes, just as the male sexual drive and violent impulses can overwhelm their conscience and their ability to think and act rationally, emotions can do the same thing in girls and women. Overwhelm their conscience and their ability to think and act rationally. If you think that's bad, I'm just getting started, okay? A little, little tippy tip of the iceberg, he continues. At least two generations of parents, especially among the well educated, because of course they got a trash education because they love an ignorant population they can expo exploit, did not teach many of their daughters to control their emotions and think rationally. The result is that women are disproportionately active in doing damage to our society. Just it's the women, guys. It's the women with their emotions doing the damage in society. Disproportionately. Disproportionately. Yeah. So I was wondering, like, is he gonna get to some specifics here? Like, what is he talking about? What are they doing? Um, and uh, setting off nukes, dirty bombs. What are they doing? Disproportionately. So he did mention specific people he's against, right? Like, or professions he's against, but he didn't give specific data to back up what he's saying. He says, American schools teach less and indoctrinate more than ever before. Big city public and most private schools, oh, he's going after private schools too, ooh, are damaging young Americans to an extent in ways no one imagined just a few years ago. Young children are prematurely sexualized. And who is facilitating all of this? Matt Gates. <laughs> That's it. I mean, more. of course, he didn't mention Matt Gates. In virtually every case, a woman. 92% of kindergarten teachers are women, 75% of all teachers are women, and 85% of librarians are women. Good job in giving us statistics on what percentage of uh, these, you know, professions attract female workers. But mm -hmm. can you can you provide the data for the sexualizing children part of it? Because there is none. Mm -hmm. Well, so wait, his thinking is emotional women, because that's what emotions do to women, right? Whenever I get emotional, the first thing I think about is what? In, in his mind, is that what happens to you, Dennis Prager? When you get emotional is the first thing that comes to mind, hey, I need to sexualize some children. Is that because you have this on your mind? Well, he thinks it's very common and he thinks it's very common. It's, it's widespread, sweeping the nation. I want to know why Dennis Prager is thinking about sexualizing children. I think that's a great question, one of many. Maybe he'll let you on his network to talk about that. Not interested. Um, yeah, there's some pretty amazing stuff there. Uh, first of all, glossing over, he, he like he understands that if he says women are disproportionately damaging, the obvious counterpoint is. I kind of feel like guys do a lot of the murdering and the raping and the robbing and all of that. And so he gets out in front of that and he's like, yes, men often feel homicidal rage. But in the same way, women can't control their emotions. And then what is the result of that? He's really not specific. I guess the result of that is that you might be a librarian in a building where there is a book that sensitive conservatives don't like. So largely it's the same thing. I guess, I guess it's the same. 
He's very worried about schools indoctrinating kids. He's literally the namesake for PragerU. <laughs> That's not a real school, but does create propaganda videos online. So I can see why he'd be sensitive about that topic. Yes, there are some schools that just propagandize to people. Uh, do, do women do some bad stuff? Sure, you know why? Because they're humans and humans are the worst. The idea that they disproportionately do more social evil than men is possible, it's not impossible, but it would demand strong evidence. And simply citing the fact that there are women librarians just ain't gonna <laughs> cut it. Except maybe at PragerU, maybe that counts as like, that can pass peer review, I don't know. Real critical thinking there, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so let me give you some more. Uh, he lies about what goes down at children's hospitals, which of course, as I talked about on the show earlier today, leads to violence toward children's hospitals. By the way, is Great there- Great day to publish that, by the way. Is there, yeah, exactly. Is there a profession that right wingers don't um, mock, minimize, belittle, uh, viciously attack? I mean, there's baristas, college professors, bartenders, bartenders social uh, workers. Social work. I mean, the list goes on and on. If you happen to work for your living in this country, uh, the Republican Party hates you. Yeah. And they tell you every day, literally every day. They respect it. If you become a senator and get a major book advance, they respect that. They do. If yes. you make propaganda videos online, they respect that. If, if you try to change your books, career to you know? emo singer, they have some respect for that. They're the only ones. But um, yeah, there's a few. There's a few little carve outs that they have. He writes, women physicians, ah, women physicians and healthcare workers are at the vanguard of ruining young people's lives at children's hospitals that push giving young people puberty blocking hormones and opposite gender hormones. Performing hysterectomies and mastectomies on healthy girls, but none of this is happening. They're not performing hysterectomies and mastectomies on healthy minor well, If you're seven minors. year old and you walk in and say, I want this, they are duty bound to give it to you and they'll pay for it too. Considering the fact that this man is like weirdly thinking about sexualizing children, mm -hmm. I think the only thing we should be thinking about is whether or not uh, castration for Dennis Prager makes some sense. I'm worried about that guy. Mm -hmm. uh, number two though is seriously like, Boston's children, Boston Children's Hospital just dealt with a serious bomb threat. Luckily, no one got hurt. Luckily, the threat wasn't actually carried out in reality. But they've been dealing with nonstop threats because of people like Dennis Prager claiming that they're mutilating children when they're not, yeah. when they're not. And by the time someone's an adult, okay, I would kindly ask people like Prager to shut up and stay out of people's business. Yeah. Because a, an adult's decision about his or her own body should only be his or her own decision. It's not Dennis Prager's freaking business to discuss what he thinks an adult should do with his or her body. Well, or what they should be allowed to do. Or because what they should be. It's he's not, not business, just opining, he's he wants creep. the law to determine what you can do. He wants to set it in a way that he is comfortable with based on his misinterpretation of ancient religious dogma. That's it, that's what he wants. And he's not done, one final excerpt from this uh, opinion piece. Because if you think clergy is safe from Dennis Prager and his uh, ire against, mm -hmm. against them, he, they would be mistaken. Women clergy have been at the vanguard of pushing Christianity and Judaism to the left, leaving mainstream churches and synagogues increasingly empty. Let's pause. Um, That's a shame. Could we maybe consider the fact that uh, churches and synagogues have been losing support and people have stopped, you know, going to these establishments because a lot of what they preach ends up being backward, ends up being hateful. I, I mean, I don't know about. If it's even true. If it's even true, yeah. Like, I, I mean, I know there's a trend. I don't think, you know, from one year to the next, they lost 40% of their parishioners. I don't think that's really how no, it works. No, it's happened over several decades yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure, yeah. right? And so there are people who might be of faith, but they don't like the organized religions. Yep. And so, like, which era is Dennis Prager more favorable toward when it comes to religion? Was it the era where Catholics were, uh, Catholic priests specifically were molesting and raping young boys? Was that the 
good religious era that we were experiencing? I'm just curious. That, well, that, that was that was back when they were men. Now they've been feminized and they don't do that anymore or something. I don't know. That would be a substantive critique of the church, which is why he's not interested in it, of course. Not interested in it, nope.